pray and everyone said a big amen amen it's time for the word for the next 40 minutes just open your spirit open your mind god has a word for you 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 god has a word for you, word for you. hallelujah amen let's invite pastor Evier. she doesn't like to be called pastor though <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah i was just enjoying that prayer let's just continue let's just continue to to journey in the spirit let's just continue to speak mysteries unto our god Oh, she's an for an ass and a shabbat and an ass. Hagen a mass and a sonas and a sonas. Hey, Shandelema, so take him a sante shiradia. Oh, yes, Lord, for what you are set to do here is a spirit to spirit transaction. And so we yield our spirits, God. Hey, no who must take on the antidote for deliverance is coming even through the foolishness of preaching and so we yield ourselves God we remove oh God our intellect we remove oh God our, our flesh and we yield ourselves to you oh God pray in the spirit pray in the spirit and but what God is set to do here is not just for us but for us to minister back to God that our spirits may minister back to you Jesus for we are a river whose streams make glad the city of our God hey God for we are a holy tabernacle Jesus you are in the midst of us we shall not be moved we shall not be moved we shall not be moved God Yes, Jesus. And to this end, God, I yield myself, O oh God, as a vessel. I say, flow through me, Jesus. Speak life to your people. Revive, O oh God bring the resurrection power of Christ through this teaching today Jesus let Jesus be seen let Jesus be seen God we want mindsets to break oh God for the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal the weapons of our warfare are not carnal and preaching is a weapon of warfare for they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds we declare this morning strongholds are pulled down strongholds are pulled down things that have stopped us from being able to see God they are pulled down in the name of Jesus Lifted high, we lift you high, Yahweh. We lift you high, Yahweh. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, Shaphan, I'm the center. Oh, you are here, Jesus. Thank you. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I just came to preach, but it's like Holy Spirit have what he's doing here today. So let's just posture ourselves in the in the like man. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Pimo. God bless you. Thank you for the opportunity to just, you know, deliver God's word. God bless you, Pimo. You're such a servant leader. I celebrate you always. Can we just please just celebrate you? I love you. I love you. You're such a shepherd, such a builder, builder of men. You see the best in them and you pull it out. You call it out by, by the finger of God. God bless you, Pimo. I love you. Hallelujah. And um, I just want to celebrate my crown, my king, the love of my life. I always, always, I can't stand on a pulpit and not, and not just celebrate my head. I love you, baby. You're awesome. God bless you. Completely awesome. Awesome guy. Awesome guy. And so we're here today to, to preach about, or to talk about, fact that God has it all together there's a girl in the audience she's always pulling me so if I if I keep on looking to this side just know that <laughs> just know that she's pulling me to, to this side love you tell um you know God has it all together he has it all together and what does that mean what does that mean you know we are in an age and in a, in a place where chaos is rife you know, um, not just talking about the pandemic alone, but let's let's first talk about how the enemy comes into us. And as I was preparing for this message, God gave me three three strategies, three tactics, three mechanisms that the enemy uses to cause us to destabilize ourselves. One, he uses distractions. I think we know that. You know, everything is happening all at once and you have no focus. It's just like, Lord, what's going on here? My kids, my husband, my work, my, there's just the day I was, I was speaking to one of my friends. I said, you start your day like, <gasps> like <laughs> literally, you, you know, you go to sleep and then you started just literally jumping out of bed and the distractions of the day just have the better of us. And before we know it, there's no real fellowship with God. There's no real understanding. Um, the enemy steals your time, you know, the world steals your time. 24 hours seem like an hour and that way <laughs> we then begin to question because we have no rooting, no grounding and we're unable to fully be rooted in our relationship with God, he starts to come in with different mechanisms. Another way, he, another thing the enemy uses is disappointment. You know, the Lord has given you a promise. You shall be a mother of nations. In fact, he said this before you even got married. <laughs> 10 years in, and he's looking like, what's this? Hope deferred makes the heart sick. And we are heart sick children of God, just walking around. The Lord promised you, you will be, you know, the CEO of your company. And even before the CEO position comes up, the global pandemic hits and all of a sudden you're wondering, not only did they not promote you, they fire you. And you are the sole breadwinner of your house. And, you know, helping your mother to send your children, uh, your siblings to school, you can't pay rent. And you're just like, goodness disappointment hits disappointment hits and you're like lord this is not what you promised this is not what you said you're praying for your sick parent and you're believing the lord and then boom something else happens and you're just like lord really this is not what you said disappointment hits god do you really have it all together is everything really in your hands is everything really in your hands? You get discouraged because you are on this journey of life and nothing just seems to click. Does God really have my back? Does he really, does, can he provide for me? You can join faith with 
a brother or a sister and say, God is going to provide for you. But the faith to believe God for yourself, that he's a good father, that he looks after you, that he tends for you. Do you really believe that? Do you really believe that? We can come to church and we speak all the Christian needs we, we have, but is it really anchored in the tenets of our mind and the tenets of our heart that the Lord God has me? deferred makes the heart sick we have a measure of truth but we don't walk in it you know we begin to question the ability of God and this is just the enemy <laughs> I want to when God let's talk about when God disrupts your life it's not the enemy doing it this time <laughs> let's talk about when God just decide you know what I'm going to be the disruptor boom and you're just like, no, man, I see Calabar. You know, there's, it, with, it, with, with, when we know that it's an attack of the devil, we know how to, you know, address it in our prayer closet. And then COVID-19, COVID-19 COVID hits a global pandemic. All of 2020, whoosh. And then, you know, December 2020, we are like, yes, 2021 is the year. We are stepping into the things that the Lord has for us. 2021 happened is like is the continuation of 2020 <laughs> even worse because where things were were were, were separate like far for far off you know we hear people are dying afar it's coming closer 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 and you're like lord really anxiety wants to set in fear wants to set in and you're like god do you really have this thing all together like how am i going to how am i going to live how am i going to you know be like god really is my life my life is in your hand is it really or have you gone on vacation for this <laughs> for you know truly let's talk i don't know if it's just you but hey it happens it happens <sighs> some point towards the end of last year God disrupted my life <laughs> he disrupted I was just chilling just thinking that I can then you know live this Christian life preach the word enjoy God just you know and then I get a call but dad is sick goodness okay no problem dad is sick no no Allah you know, let's, let's go and find out what's going on. Your father has cancer. Lord, no. No, God. No, God. How can this be? How can this be? How can this be? You love me. You promised. You promised, God, that no sickness will come near the ones that we love because we serve you. What is going on, God? truly the musings of my heart less than a week after i preached i was out i didn't even know what was happening in that week or what was i was about to face in the following week i mean i got a call about three days after to get that phone call and i was just like lord what's going on and everything i mean everything from september 2020 till about maybe i'm just still smelling of the smoke that, I, that my life was set on fire. When I mean fire, I mean fire. I, I had to fly to London, all my siblings. We were there and I watched this man who, I grew up knowing him as my hero, strong, able to, I mean, my dad doesn't sleep. He's just a go-getter. He's just a... And I just watched how sickness broke him. And it broke me. And everything around me, everything around us, seemed to just be falling apart. Everything. I didn't realize how much of a pillar my father was for our family, or is for our family, or his strength was for our family. And so to see him incapacitated and waiting for us to tend to him, oh, it was chaos. Our siblings were confused, siblings fighting, siblings while arguing without my stepmom. It was just, it was all sorts. And in the midst of it, I was being tested. Are you a Christian, really? Yeah. 
Do you really believe that God is going to heal your father? Do you really believe that peace is going to come to your family in the midst of it all? Do you really believe? Do you really believe? Do you really believe that God is going to come? Every single day, I would wake up. I was in charge of a kitchen duty. <laughs> I was in charge of kitchen duty. Now, bear in mind, I, was my father's, I am my father's first child. And so, as the first child, I mean, come on. I'm supposed to be in charge of... Exactly, you understand, Pastor Oche? You know, elevated stuff. You know? And so we get there and I'm like, guys, okay, you know, as the first daughter, I'm, I'm, I'm the one that's taking charge of this of this situation. Let's sit down and, you know. And my siblings are like, um, yeah, no, sorry, mate. Let's, let's all be equal here. You know, there's no such thing as like, you know, we're not going to look up to you. So I would say one day, we say 10. I say, Jesus, what's going on here? I become my husband. I say, inshallah, they don't respect me. <laughs> it's because I don't have money. It's because I'm not, I'm not doing something for myself. That's why my, like, literally, literally, my idea, everything that I knew was challenged. You come up here and you preach and you're like, success is not, you know, what you have. Success is not how much is in your bank account. Success is not how high up you are in the company. And then you, what you say is tested. And then your mind starts to say, oh, maybe I'm really not successful because. <laughs> but God had to start. Literally, I, I came to now realize on the inside of me because if a word is not tried if a word is not tested it cannot take root on the inside of you right and so i had to stand i faced my sister who is the ceo of a you know hedge fund and my brother who is a, this fantastic entrepreneur me housewife <laughs> Lawyer Sha, but <laughs> we have not we have not finished that. We are just doing the housewife and mother's stuff right now. And ministry, thank you. I had to, and that was the first time I embraced my call to ministry. In the midst of that fire, I'd been I'd been struggling with it. I because I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm just a girl that God has, you know, I love God, and they just see it and that was it. I'm not really minister, pastor. What miss me with that? Thank you. People say, Pastor Evie, who? Who? Who is the pastor? Evie, please. But in the midst of that, you know, they put me on kitchen duty. Let me continue my story. Sorry, before I... and I was broken. For the first two weeks, I was like, how can they be saying that I should serve? Meanwhile, one is paying the staff. She's in charge of all the, you know, because money is power. That's, how we, that's what we equate it to in the world. Money is power. So the one that is dealing with the money is the most powerful. Mm -hmm. And that's how I thought until Jesus Christ encountered me in this. And so I was in kitchen duty and I'll be washing the leaf that we are using to cook. And I was just like, Lord. And Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ literally spoke to me and he said, Yvie, you are doing what I do. He says, can, can I invite you to do what I do? Can I invite you to lead how I lead? And it was at that point, I was like, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And the minute I chose to agree with God over, yes, I'm the one that the staff are looking at like I'm, 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 I'm part of them. It's fine. The minute my heart aligned with what the Lord had called me to do in that season, we began to see a turnaround in my dad's health. God began to use the healing grace that he had put on the inside of me to, to speak to his food. I began to see the call. <laughs> correctly in the midst of the chaos in the midst of the chaos and through that season i went from one that thought was i was very lowly and 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 my my impression of myself as oh well i'm just i'm not i'm not like them i'm not to to coming to see myself and really accept myself how as god sees me as the warrior child of God, in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the chaos. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
the testimony was when I was leaving, the chef was like, if you're, in fact, if you're, you can't go, you can't go. Your brother and sister won't be able to handle this. <laughs> I, I saw how I led from the bottom up. I didn't need to sign the checks. I didn't need to pay the salaries. I didn't need to speak to the accountants. I didn't need to even communicate with the doctors. I was doing the work of ministry back in the kitchen. And through that, the Lord used, used me to create a prayer altar in my house. You see, uh, there are some things that are yours, that that which is yours cannot be contested over. Your grace will flow through it. Yes, your grace will flow through it. And so where I tried to assume position and it was contested and it was, you know, there was, um, you know, confront confrontation, I began, I began to understand. I was like, okay, maybe, maybe that really isn't, that's not where, that's not where the Lord will have me right now. That's not where the Lord will have me right now. And so I just assumed that as priest in my home, I resurrected an altar unto God. <laughs> and by the mercies of God, it brought a salvation, salvation to my father. My father became born again through the altar of praise, through the altar of thanksgiving that we raise to God. In the midst of it all, it seemed like I was going crazy though. I would wake up at 6 a.m. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be able to go to bed by until 9 or get home until 9. I won't see my kids. It was chaos. But God was in the midst of the chaos. God is in the midst of the chaos. I am here to tell you, your life might seem like it is not well put together. Your life might not make sense to you. You don't understand it. But God is in the midst of your chaos. And to take it further, you see, what the enemy is fighting, he is fighting your understanding of who you believe in. Who has called you. You see, that is it. And this is the crux of my message here today. Let's go to Romans 8 so that we can, we can make this meeting legal. <laughs> We've been talking and I'm, let's go to Romans 8, 28. And this is where I'm going to stay for a little bit today. Romans 8, 28. And it reads, and we know that all things, can we say all things? Say all things. Not some things, right? Not most things, right? But what? Hallelujah. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. I'm going to pick three things from this message. You see, uh, uh, from, this, from this verse, I'm going to pick for good, right? I'm going to pick to those who are called. And then I'm going to pick according to his purpose. And we're going to sit down and look at that. You see, uh, often in the church, this is one of the most, everybody knows this verse. All things are working for my good. Eh? Stop it. That's not scriptural. Sir, <laughs> it's not your good. And so when you see things happening around you, because we've memorized the Bible verse as all things work together for my good. When things are happening that don't seem like they are for your good, it makes God look like a liar. And God is looking at him being like, that is not in my word. I didn't say for your good. I said for good. For good. And goodness is the nature of God. Can we go to Genesis 1, please? Let's just go to Genesis 1. As we... As we come to understand the, the goodness of God. In Genesis 1, I'm going to read, I'm going to read. You see, uh, we see the word good mentioned in Genesis 1 seven times in the creation story. And I'm just going to read the, the, the parts of the, the verses that it pertains to. I'm not going to read the whole thing. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Verse 10. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Verse 12. 
and the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was, guys help me, and God saw that it was, hallelujah verse 18 and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and god saw that it was hallelujah verse 21 so god created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters abounded according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind and god saw that it was Verse 25, and God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> then God saw everything that he had made, and it indeed was very, so it was very good. What I see from the creation story is that every time God would make, he would make sure it had its, his signature on it. Does this thing look like me? Does this thing resemble me? Is my nature in it? And what is the nature of God? Goodness. Goodness. Can we just say goodness is the nature of God? You see, uh, the very essence of God is goodness. And it's not goodness as we know goodness. You see, uh, the reason why our, our understanding of goodness is limited is because we exist in time. We are constrained by the ambits or the bandwidths of time. What I see as good, goodness is so subjective to me. What I see as good might not be good to Pastor Uche. What is good to Pastor Uche might not be good to Pimo. Goodness is subjective to us, but to God who exists on the outside of time. <laughs> what he calls goodness is truly good. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of the testimony of Ravi Zacharias. He said that at the time, there was a time when he was still back in India. He wanted to... Um, he really, really wanted to be part of the army. So he went for the interview and he was like, oh, wow. The, you know, the interview went really well. And, you know, he just, he was vibing with the, with the um, soldier that was interviewing him. And then at the end of the interview, the man goes, I really like you, but I'm sorry. You know, you can't get this job. And he said he was broken. He was broken. And if... At that point, how many of us, just like Ravi Zachariah, would think at that point, God isn't good? I'm disappointed. God is not good. But God that stopped him from getting that job, he said, had a purpose for him in the States and called him in the States and through that point launched a great ministry for him. How many of us here, and I'm here to tell you guys that the God that looks at things in eternity, it seems like your life is in chaos. It seems like you're not getting that thing that you want right now. It seems like COVID-19 is going nowhere. But can I just challenge you to know that the God we serve who exists on, oh, in eternity is good. Can we really believe that? That is what, if, if that is the only thing we take from today, I believe that the enemy would have lost a stronghold in our mind. He would have lost a he would have lost a footing in our faith because if he can question if we if he can lead us to question the goodness of God, then almost like dominoes everything com comes crumbling down like a house of cards. We need to believe that our God is good. Our God is good. Our God is good all the time, not some of the time. All the time. Psalm 145 says, the Lord is good to all and his tender, tender mercies over all his works. Psalm 107 says, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. James 1 says, every good and perfect gift 
comes from the Lord. We are quote, see how you people are helping me. <laughs> Do we really believe it? Let the words that we say really come into our minds. Let it come from being heart knowledge, head knowledge, Lord. Let it rest inside our hearts, Father. That when it looks like everything is tumbling upside down, that we know that the good God has it all together. All together. He has it all together. He makes all things beautiful. He makes all things beautiful. God is good. This is our truth. This is our truth. In the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the havoc, God is good. God is good. And I don't know if there's, there's somebody here, and I don't know if you're watching or if you're here, and they said that your mother will never come out of a coma. And the Lord wants me to tell you, I am good. I am good. I am good. He wants you to know his goodness. I am good, says the Lord. Remember that which I have spoken to you. I do not fail. I cannot fail. Remember that I am good. She served the Lord. She's a believer, in fact. And you're wondering, Lord, this woman served you. Or she just go like that. The Lord says to tell you, I am good. I am good. Hallelujah. And he causes all things to work out for good. This, to, to, to those who are called. Now, let's take that part. Let's take the second part. This is all things. Let's go back to Romans 8.28. Thank you, Jesus. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called, <laughs> to those who are called. Jesus Christ said, you did not call me. I called you. This is the essence of our faith. This is the, this is the very foundation of our faith. He didn't, he, there's no way that we would have come to God. No way. No way. Even if you were born in church, <laughs> there is no way except he first called you. And this speaks to the very identity that we have as Christians. He says, before I formed you, Jeremiah, I knew you. I called you, I separated you to be a prophet to the nations. I know you. I know you. This is another hurdle that we must cross to know that we are known by God. And it's not a knowing of distance. He knows us. He knows us. Can you say, God knows me? Say, God knows me. I am called. I am called. I am called. The enemy wants to come for that. In the midst of the chaos. Did God really call me? Am I really a believer? Am I really his child? If I am his child, how would he forsake me? Well, I want to take you to Jesus in the wilderness. <laughs> Oftentimes to those he calls, it seems like there is a testing. There is a testing. The enemy will come if you are really the son of God. If you are really the son of God, turn this bread, turn this, this rock to, to, to bread. If you are really the son of God. And so you're in good company. <laughs> Understand that what you go through does not mean that the Lord hasn't called you. Understand that what you struggle with does not mean that the Lord has not called you. 
Masandili pras kosha fenda la visa tanda es koshi da la mande. Understand that there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation. There is no condemnation. And I do not digress. I want you to understand there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus who walk not according to the spirit to the flesh but according to the spirit of life there is no condemnation there is no condemnation God the thing that you're struggling with and I don't I'm not digressing this is not in my notes but we flow with the spirit that which you are struggling with the Lord wants me to tell you there is no condemnation come before me confess your sins I have forgiven you already there is no condemnation we just break the back of condemnation right now in the name of Jesus we break the back of condemnation in the name of Jesus Christ you are called by God you are known by him he calls things out he calls things out he calls the goodness of God that is in the depths of your spirit he calls it out of you there is no condemnation there is no condemnation in the name of Jesus thank you God thank you Jesus thank you Jesus for deliverance thank you Jesus for can we just pray in the spirit there's a deep work I sense the Lord doing and I will just have him stay there there is no condemnation there is no condemnation who is that that will lay a charge against the Lord's elect there is no condemnation is it Christ who died <laughs> I do not condemn you says the Lord if it's just this one person there is no condemnation put your head up high there is no condemnation for he called you he calls you his own he calls you his own you are loved by a good God you are loved by a good God there is no condemnation stand before him for the blood speaks for you mercy speaks for you daily stand before him mercy speaks over judgment stand before him let his blood speak better things do not run away from the throne of grace there is no condemnation yes God thank you Jesus thank you for the speaking blood God to that one that is struggling and thinks that they are not worthy of you thank you for the speaking blood thank you for your mercy thank you for your love thank you for your grace over that one Jesus nice thank you Jesus thank you Jesus the Lord holds it all together and he holds it all together for his goodness to be revealed in your life for him to be revealed in your life and let's take the third part for his purpose that's another that's another <laughs> this romance to 820 is a bastard we have we have we have, <laughs> we have reinterpreted this verse so much because according to my purpose can i just say you don't have a purpose you don't have a purpose. You don't have, let, 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 let that just sink in a little bit. <laughs> you don't have a purpose. He has a purpose. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh yeah, hallelujah. Spirit of God is one. His purpose, his purpose his purpose speaks to surrender because the, we walk around thinking no i have a you have a part in god's purpose 
you have a part in God's purpose. And the entirety of Romans 8, 28 is <laughs> he causes all things in your life to work together for good, for his signature, for his glory, to reflect him. Yeah? Because you've been called to him to reveal his purpose on the earth. Are we understanding this? His purpose speaks to surrender. <laughs> Christ said, for I have come according to the volume of books to do thy will, O God. There is a volume of books <laughs> that is, has your name on it. There is a volume of books that has your name on it. And we need to say like Christ, I have come according to the volume of books to do not my will, but your will, oh God, to accomplish your purpose on the earth for my generation, for the time that I am here, for the, pur for the, for the purpose that I have been sent for. This is it. I love, I love, when people told me the, um, the, the, the teaching for this week, I was like, yes, I love it. I love this teaching. It encapsulates everything. Everything. Because we're born into a faith. You become born again. And it's like, I don't know. We were sold a lie by the former church. No, no. God is cleansing his body. We thank God. Come to God and your life will be better though you're gonna have a car you're gonna have good health you're gonna have everything nice you know everything good everything sweet sorry tell saying i should calm down you know she's my she's my brand she's my brand babe so <laughs> i'm gonna behave myself <laughs> relax. you know we come to god and we think it's gonna be smooth sailing <laughs> we don't know that we're born into a fight <laughs> you're born into a war you're not born, you're not born to where, where we are soldiers. We are soldiers. The way, there was an analogy that God gave me in the spirit. He says, he says, we're not to be defending. We're supposed to be almost like head, but you know, those area boys <laughs> like, oh yeah, devil come now. Try me, try me. When you know your identity, it's an offense against the gates of hell. You don't defend yourself. You're like, come on. Do you know who my daddy is? Do you know who my daddy is? If our perspective can shift this morning, we will not look at disruption as a quake, as a, oh God, please help me. We will, we, we will glory. We will glory. Like Paul said, we will glory in trial. We will glory. We will praise the Lord. We will sing. We will shout. Understanding this is for the revelation of the glory of our God. His signature is on our lives. That is why all things. That is why all things. Jeremiah 18 4 says, and this is the part it says and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter so he made it again into another vessel i want us to just imagine the potter he didn't use carpenter that's why i love i love i love this analogy <laughs> you know he's making it he's like ah it looks like it's a bit push throws it back on the on the on the spinning wheel you know and it doesn't look good it doesn't look good but he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to who the potter to make as it seemed good to the potter to make as it seemed good to his purpose to make once again we see the word good <laughs> Once again, we see the word good. The Bible doesn't mince words. Every single word in the Bible is, there's a deliberate, 
nature to it as it seemed good and if we go according to the to the principle of first mention good means is synonymous with god it's his signature and so he's telling you the disruption that is happening in your life this chaos this craziness i am yet again i am yet again I am yet again making you into another vessel. I am yet again refining you. I am yet again refining you until I can see me in you. Until I can see myself in your situation. Do not let the enemy rob you of your furniture. Do not even let the enemy give you your own furniture. Let's not be gullible Christians anymore. We come into understanding this morning, Lord. And from henceforth, we choose to glory. We choose to dance in trial. Knowing God that you are not just refining us. You are causing it to work out for good. For good. According to your purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That haphazard situation has the hand of God in it. That crazy situation your marriage doesn't seem to be working the miscommunication you say a he says Z and you're just like God but you said that we should marry what's going on here Jesus I am causing it to work out together for good says the Lord yes even that yes even that yes even that I'm causing it to work out for good I'm causing it to work out for good and we stand up. I believe the Lord is now calling us back. He gave me Hosea 6. Sometimes when these things happen, our hearts are so broken. Our hearts are so broken. And it's like, Lord, what do we do? Hosea 6, verse 1 and 2. Come and let us return to the Lord. Let us return. Let our hearts transition back to God. Let our minds transition back to God. For he has torn. But he will heal us. And he will bind us up. After two days. I love this. Because there is a progression to healing. After two days. He will revive us. And on the third day. <laughs> he will raise us up that we may live in his sight this was a type and shadow of what happened with Jesus and now he's giving it to us to say come back to me let me heal you again let me mend those broken that broken heart let me bind up those broken bones let me nurture you let the word of let the water of my spirit revive you again let the power of my spirit resurrect you again let's just begin to talk to our, our, our father oh maria sakalabandi oh yes lord yes lord as i was preparing the lord says there's gonna be such a mighty wave of healing in the house such a mighty wave of healing to come over the hearts of his children such a mighty wave of healing to restore intimacy back to him again such a mighty wave of healing to bring revival back into our hearts because when our hearts are postured in the right way the fire can be lit again we can come again zeal can burst forth from within us not just to do the will of God not just to do the work of God but zeal to know him zeal to hunger for him I speak a healing fire God I just release the healing fire of the Lord over this house in the name of Jesus catch it Catch it, masala brase kileras. Ra le mantosh ke dali andele ke sota. Hey, zofera shezen dali asota ra ba ba ba. 
to bring you back to intimacy with the Lord to restore you back to your original place where you have left the conversation with God to revive you again to restore you again to intimacy with your father to intimacy with your God to an understanding of the goodness of God a shift in mindsets in the name of Jesus a shift in mindsets we uproot the strongholds that have hitherto impeded your people in their journey to God we uproot the strongholds in the name of Jesus we uproot the strongholds we uproot them in the name of Jesus we say you are good God Father, we just worship you. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Hey, sabra kera ba shanda ramos. Hey, nala ba sande kaliya ramos. I do not have the words, God, to give you praise. And so receive the spirit, oh God, the words of my spirit. Receive the words of my spirit this morning. You cause all things to work together for God. What is that mountain that stands before Zerubbabel, says the Lord? It has become a plain because you cause all things to work together for good. Oh, my shit, that mountain of resentment, that mountain of doubt, that mountain of doubt, that mountain of doubt, you become a plain in the name of Jesus. That mountain of doubt, you become a plain in the name of Jesus. Father, we just worship you for this morning. We bless your name, Jesus. We thank you, God, for the revelation of Christ this morning, that Christ has been revealed in our hearts, O oh God. May we never lose this, O oh God. Father, as we even leave, Lord, entrench this truth in our hearts, that we will glory in tribulation. <laughs> Oh, that we will glory in tribulation, God. That we will know because we know that all things, all things work together for good. Because we know that we've been called by you. Because we know that we have a part to play in your enormous purpose for the earth, oh God. Just worship you, Jesus. Give you all the praise, God. In Jesus' name.